habe eine kurze Pause gemacht und habe ähm, in der Zwischenzeit was gegessen und mir einen schönen Tee gemacht. Ähm, ich möchte vorab erst einmal nochmal hier ein Märchenbuch lesen. Wir haben ja... Oh, das, oh, das tut so weh. Das tut so weh. Das tut so weh. Ich habe zwei nicht, ich habe zwei nichts, nicht getroffen. Oh. Oh, das tut so weh. Oh, das tut so weh. Oh, aber ich weiß nicht, ähm, wie... Ah, okay, gibt vom Kapitel. Wie gesagt, es hätte ja auch... Also, ähm, ich habe bei Lawrence verkackt. Vielleicht hätte ich die freigeschaltet, wenn er noch im Leben wäre. Deswegen müssen wir... Müssen wir erstmal damit rechnen, dass ich hier noch ein bisschen weiter verkacken könnte. Alles klar, wir gucken hier erstmal. Trollbestattungsriten. Die lange Abwesenheit. Die große Mutter Tod hat ihren Blick stets auf uns gerichtet. Unter ihrem gütigen Auge schlagen wir unsere Schlachten. Wir pflegen unsere Wunden, wir feiern unsere Siege. Wir ertragen unsere Leiden und wenn wir sterben, ist sie da. Ihre Umarmung ist wie die Stille des Berges, wie der schwere Frieden des Steines. Ein Trollbegräbnis ist ein heiliges Ritual, das von der Trollmutter an den Sohn mündlich weitergegeben wird. Es beginnt bei Sonnenuntergang mit der Errichtung des Kahn, Kains. <lacht> Einen kleinen Steinhaufen. Er steht für die Generation an Trollen, die bereits gestorben sind und die das Fundament der Lebenden bilden. Die Waffen des Trolls werden an jene verteilt, die ihm am nächsten standen. Der Leichnam und der Rest seiner Besitztümer werden verbrannt. Und auch wenn jeder Teilnehmer etwas über das Leben des Verstorbenen sagen muss, würde die Offenheit, mit der die Trauerreden gehalten werden, jeden Menschen die Schamesröte ins Gesicht treiben. Okay. Vivian, Georgies Mädchen. Vieles von Vivians Vergangenheit liegt im Dunkeln. Sie zieht es vor, lieber nicht über ihr Leben in den Heimatlanden zu reden. Sie wollte in Fabletown etwas Neues aufbauen, aber arbeitet letzten Endes für Georgie im Pudding and Pie. Sie führt kein schlechtes Leben. Georgie hat Gefallen an Vivian gefunden und so muss sie keine Jobs im Open Arms annehmen. Ah... Stattdessen spielt sie die Rolle einer Gastgeberin und hilft Georgie dabei, die Kunden zufriedenzustellen. Dr. Swinehart, der Feldarzt. Dr. Swinehart ist Fabletowns Arzt. Er ist so geschickt im Umgang mit chirurgischen Instrumenten, dass er ohne Probleme an sich selbst operieren kann. Er hat viele Jahre als Feldarzt gedient und seine Talente manchmal eingesetzt, um die einheimischen Bevölkerung zu beeindrucken. Ihm untersteht derzeit die Sonderforschungsabteilung der Matheserklinik. Sie wurde so genannt, um einer genaueren Untersuchung durch die Menschen zu entgehen, da sie sonst herausfinden würden, dass es sich hierbei um eine Einrichtung zur gesundheitlichen Betreuung von Fabelwesen handelt. Fliegenfänger. Oh, ich hoffe, du hast dich gemeint wegen dem Job. Der Froschkönig. Aha, der Froschkönig. Hm. Einst ein Prinz, der von einer Hexe in einen Frosch verwandelt wurde. Der freundliche und geniale Fliegenfänger erhielt diesen Namen als nicht gerade subtilen Hinweis auf seinen Hang, Fliegen zu fangen und zu verspeisen. Seine Frau und seine Kinder wurden in den Heimatlanden brutal hingerichtet. Eine Tatsache, die er zu verdrängen versucht indem er einer Reihe endloser Aufgaben und hausmeisterlicher Pflichten nachgeht. Oh, Bro. Es tut mir leid, dass ich dir vorhin Angst eingejagt habe anscheinend, aber es tut mir so leid. Der kopflose Reiter. Der hessische Geist. Die Hessen! Ähm. Oh, fuck. <lacht> Entschuldigung. <lacht> Es heißt, der kopflose Reiter soll der Geist eines besonderen, furchterregenden und makaberen deutschen Söldner gewesen sein, der seinen Kopf im Kanonenhagel während des amerikanischen Unabhängigkeitskriegs verloren hat. Dafür, äh, das Gespenst ist vor allem bekannt dafür, Ichabod Crane eines Nachts in den Wäldern von Sleepy Hollow verfolgt zu haben. 
Es gibt Gerüchte, wonach es nur die jüngste Verkörperung eines uralten Dämons ist. Zu seinen früheren Formen zählen angeblich einen Häuptling mittleren Alters, der eine Peitsche aus Menschenknochen schwang und ein schottischer Fürst, der im Streit um Grundbesitz enthauptet wurde. Sleepy Hollow. Das ist ein cooler Film. Hey, hey, hey. So. Ähm, die trip trap bar Die Kneipe. Das trip trap die älteste Bar in New York City, wurde 1725 von Starcard, dem legendären Wikinger und Schurken, heimlich gegründet, um Fabelwesen einen Ort zu bieten, an dem sie zusammenkommen, trinken und sich gegenseitig bemitleiden können. Damals war die Bar unter dem Namen Cremarians Tavern bekannt. Aber schlussendlich hat er sie bei einer Wette an einem Stamm von Bergtreuen verloren, der sie prompt umbenannt und für sich vereinnahmt hat. Holly ist die aktuelle Eigentümerin. Sie hat die Bar von ihrer Mutter geerbt, als diese von im frühen 20. Jahrhundert bei einem Bussenunglück ums Leben kam. Auntie Greenleaf, der weiße Hirsch. Auntie Greenleaf ist Gärtnerin, Alchemistin und liebt Tiere. Außerdem ist sie eine der wenigen abtrünnigen Hexe, die Hexen, die noch unüberwacht und ungehindert außerhalb des 13. Stocks leben. Gerüchten zufolge hat sie in den Heimatlanden eine Tochter verloren und leidet nun an Verfolgungswahn und depressiven Stimmungsschwankungen. Das Mädchen, was wir gesehen haben, Rachel wahrscheinlich. Sie zeigt sich meist nur zu später Stunde und dann nur in Gestalt eines schemenhaften weißen Hirsches, den die Einwohner Brookhavens oft hinter vorgehaltener Hand als Geist bezeichnen. Ja. Ähm, ich habe übrigens den Baum auch nicht verbrannt, das habe ich irgendwie gar nicht gesagt. Ne? Also nicht nur, weil die Leute, die, drauf ange die auf dem Schwarzmarkt kaufen, anscheinend darauf angewiesen sind, sondern einfach auch, weil es anscheinend so ein Familiending ist. Das kann ich ja nicht machen. Ich ziehe mir gerade meine Jacke aus, aber irgendwie hänge ich fest. Ah, ich bin draußen. Okay. Ähm. Glimmerbehälter, die praktische Tarnung. Glimmer können auf verschiedene Arten hergestellt werden. Eine der aufgrund ihrer Einfachheit am ähm, häufigsten Herstellungsweise ist, einen kleinen ausgehöhlten Behälter zu nehmen und darin mehrere einzigartige Gegenstände aufzubewahren, die der Person gehören, in die man sich verwandeln will. Damit der Talisman funktioniert, wird eine Hexe benötigt. Diese Art von Klima hat zwei Nachteile. Es ist absolut unmöglich, ein einzigartiges Aussehen zu erzielen und die Beschaffenheit des Gefäßes macht es relativ instabil. Entzauberungsring. Okay. Äh, haben wir nicht sowas in der Art? Und wir haben bei Felsenring im Mund gefunden. Ähm, der Artusring. Dem Ring wird nachgesagt, es er wäre von einem Byzant byzantinischen Clan erschaffen worden, um sich gegen einen Hexenzirkel zur Wehr zu setzen. Der Ring der Entzauberung, auch Entzauberungsring oder Magiebannring, wurde Lancelot von der Herren von See überreicht. Das Verwaltungsbüro fand den Ring nach der Umsiedlung von nach New Amsterdam und übergab ihn Auntie Greenleaf, um ihn aufzubewahren. Ja. Wir haben ihn jetzt. <lacht> so. Bloody Mary <lacht> Die moderne Legende Die wahre Geschichte über die Person, die Bloody Mary genannt wird, ist selbst dem Fabelwesen, die am ehesten mit ihren Mitgliedern vertraut sind, fast völlig unbekannt. Zumindest ihr Name, Mary, ist unumstritten genau wie ihre Vorliebe für grausame Gewalt. Ihre natürliche Resistenz gegen Magie und Sa Zauber Magie und Zauber sowie ihre sonderbaren Fähigkeiten, jede reflektierende Oberfläche als Portal nutzen zu können, um so Raum und Zeit praktisch zu ignorieren. Die Weltlichen halten sie für die wehklagende Erscheinung einer kinderlosen Frau. Aber Beweise dafür 
gibt es bisher keine. Alles klar. So. Jetzt geht's auch los. Mit Episode 4. If you can't afford to look human, you're going to the farm. It's as simple as that. Do you have any idea how much it costs to have an entire family in glamour? I can't finish the mirror. It's missing a piece. Crane must have taken a shard with him. The open arms. Enjoy your stay. Thanks, Bigby. And thanks for covering for me last time, too. Bigby? How could you do this to me? I guess I finally see you for who you are! Tell me who did it! Just tell me who did it! I know you know! I don't think he did it. What? Look at him. Do you really think this man murdered these women? It was a good show, but, you know... Just take him, okay? Take Crane! Well, this is going to be a beautiful relationship we have with you guys. Really, I mean it. Out with the old, in with the new. Long live the queen. Bullets are a nasty business. The silver slug deformed and shredded on impact. He'll be okay, though. Hmm? He'll be okay? His internal organs are positively riddled. If I don't extract every single scrap of silver, he's liable to suffer some long-term toxicosis. Easy there. Try not to move. We can't keep meeting this way, old boy. I figured I'd be done before you were conscious, but there's little I can do for the pain. Swinehart, how bad is it? No, not the worst I've seen, but damn near it. I must say, you're testing even my skills here. Please, Big B, don't move it. Doctor. Look, I'm a bit engaged saving his life at the moment, but if the fractured extremity concerns him that much, he can set it himself. Rein. Das ist ein Problem. Not bad. That'll do, I suppose. <lacht> He's lucky to be alive, and he won't be next time if he keeps going like this. He didn't listen to me before. Maybe he'll listen to you. I don't know about that. Well, he should. There are limits to what even I can do. This <sighs> is the job. Quiet. Just relax. I find him very sympathetic, Doctor. I like his voice very much. It's so unpleasant. Excuse me, Miss White, but. Perhaps it'd be better if you gave me a few minutes to finish with him. I, I think I should stay. At least until he's... out of the woods. Believe me, Bigby couldn't be in better hands. And I need the space to work, so... Don't worry, Snow. I'll be okay. 
We'll be done in a moment. Just please, give us the time. Hör auf den Doktor! Ich bin... Ja, 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 will mich hel hey, Doc, helfen. Hey, how much longer? Colin, leave him be. It's finished when it's finished. Because I once watched a vet sew a turtle together in ten minutes flat. Uh, Colin, you're not even supposed to be here right now. Oh, really? Where am I supposed to be? I'm here to take care of my friend. Could you please not distract the doctor while he has my chest cut open? Yes, that would be helpful. <laughs> <sighs> There. All done. Great. This isn't a habit you should keep to. Having visits with me. And, well, this time... This time was no joke. Eat as many metal shellings as you see fit, but take just one more silver round near your heart, and the only place I'll be visiting you is the morgue. Miss White. He'll be fine for light duty, if he can figure out what that means. He knows what it means. It's just been an unusual couple of days. I know, but please, don't give him the excuse. His body will eventually give out. Take care of him, please. Oh, ich mag ihn. I will. He'll need rest, I assume. Sleep mostly. Just keep watch. Snow has enough to deal with, Swineheart. I can take care of myself. Clearly. Anyways, guard against, as they say. Miss White, Sheriff, Colin. Swiney. <laughs> okay, die mögen sich nicht, eh? So, how do you, um, feel? It's Bigby, Snow. He'll be okay. Hell, I've seen him take worse. Don't worry about me, all right? I'll be fine. See? Strong as an oak, this guy. Hmm. <coughs> I'm glad you're not dead. You, uh... You stopped breathing, you know, when you passed out or, or died, I guess. It, um, it kind of scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I've never seen you like that. And when Swineheart arrived, you know him, he's never worried. And even he thought you were... I'm pretty hard to kill. Yeah, you were really fucked up, man. You look like when you take an action figure and bend its limbs the wrong way. <laughs> Colin... I'm just saying I was worried about him is all. The guy hasn't had a night's rest in days. Well, I'll get some rest when this whole thing is done. What whole thing? What's even happening out there? I mean, do you guys have like a plan or something? And who should I be asking? Should I be worried about the crooked man taking over? Or is Crane still the thing? The Crooked Man, Bloody Mary, the Tweedles. This is bigger than what I thought it was. Yeah. The Crooked Man came out of the shadows for a reason. For him to attack us so blatantly like that. He either feels invincible or desperate. Well, if those are my two options, I don't think I'd pick desperate. What do you mean? You traded Crane to save Bigby. I'm just saying. That's not exactly something you do when you're playing with house money. So he called my bluff. It's not like I'm gonna let Bloody Mary just murder- Yeah, uh, thanks, Snow, for all that back there. No problem. Thanks? You're not pissed that Crane's flown the coop? Or that the crooked man thinks he's got Snow under his thumb? What else could Snow do? If she didn't hand him over, my ass would be down the witching well. Crane still would have been taken. Okay, okay, I'll take your word for it. All I care about right now is... Just what does the Crooked Man want out of this? I thought he was just a... loan shark. But clearly, he's operating in other circles. It can't just be about Crane, right? Getting him out of town? Is this all about the murders? Crane can't be useful to him anymore. So what could this have to do with Faith and Lily? Crane was a puppet, and the Crooked Man worked the strings. This is all about control of Fabletown. 
But then what do prostitutes have to do with it? Lily? And Faith? I don't know how it all works out yet, but I know it does. Somehow. The Crooked Man declared war against us last night. At least that's what I thought when it happened. But now I see this war has been going on for years. We just haven't noticed it because our way of doing things is broken. We need to do things the right way. What does that mean, the right way? What do you think I mean? I don't know, but it suspiciously sounds like your way. Bigby's the one on the front lines. You can't give him a leash. He doesn't work that way. A little restraint and thought behind things will never hurt anyone, Colin. Look, I know things haven't gone great recently, but we're still doing our best. That's not good enough. So, starting now, we do everything cut and dried, by the book, straight as an arrow. Pure as driven snow. I'm not saying I'm the arbiter of- Sure you're not. <sighs> this town has enough monsters. What happened last night, what you turned into, it can't happen again. We need monsters to fight monsters. Colin, if I really believed that we needed him to lose his flippin' mind at a moment's notice, then that would mean I'd lost all faith in our ability to help this town. I'm sure from your vantage point, it's extraordinarily easy to judge me. Big B. But you sit behind a desk all day. And only tonight did you see what it's like to be pushed into a corner all the time just for doing your job. You think I don't know what it's like to have my life in danger? Oh, to sorry. To push to do things? Uh. I know what it's like. And I know what it's like to lie to yourself, to justify what you've done. So don't talk to me like I'm other people. Look, Bigby, I care about how this is done just as much as I care about it getting done. So for that, you want to give him a handicap? Like the bad guys will worry if shit gets sloppy. Everybody wants Bigby to smile and shave and take a shower now and then. Hell, I'm practically the president of the Bigby Don't Be Such a Dick Club. But this is the wrong fucking time to put shackles on him. Hold on, who says I'm sloppy? I always do what I do for a reason. And it's all turned out how you planned. He'll get the job done. Just let him do it. I'm going to... I'm going to let you do it, okay? It's just that... Now that I'm Deputy Mayor, I need your respect. And this situation has to end. What situation? All unglamored fables starting today have to go and uh? stay at the farm. Oh, give me a fucking break. Are you gonna let her talk to me like that? It's been the rule for a reason, Colin. And Bigby knows it's for the best of the town. Look, everyone just calm down, all right? I'm perfectly calm. I'm not. Tell me right now, what's it gonna be, Bigby? Wolf's residence. That's uh, rude. Oh, Buffkin, what is it? It's okay. I'll let him know. Thanks. Guess who's waiting in your office right now? Fit in. Narissa. Narissa? That broad from the pudding and pie? Yes. Apparently, she told Buffkin that she has something she needs to talk to you about. But that she'll only tell you. And what do you think that could be? Uh, Bigby's got an admirer. You always do well with the, uh, disenfranchised. She knows something. She's helped me a little with the case. Maybe she has something else. Maybe she does. I should get back to the business office. I've left Buffkin alone for too long taking calls. And I should probably change out of these clothes. Consider the discussion tabled, but not over. Let me know when you're done with Nerissa. Aye, aye, Captain. She's a piece of work. Hey, you're not really gonna send me to the farm, are you? I mean, she seemed real serious about it, but I can still hang out here. Look, uh, maybe a few will get sent up, but you're my friend, Colin. I wouldn't do that to you. Don't worry about it. Thanks, Bigby. Sorry, but Colin played by me at my Ausschwein. Hausschweine sind anerkannt heutzutage. 
Ich finde es nicht geil, aber die sind anerkannt. Und Colin ist mein Hausschwein. Ende der Geschichte. Du kannst mir nicht verbieten, was für ein Haustier ich habe. Noch Haustiere sind Freunde. Episode 4 im Schafspelz. Hey. Hi, Sheriff. Hi, Narissa. Have a seat. I, um, are you okay? You didn't look good last night. I wasn't sure you'd be, you know, around. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. <coughs> Huff and puffs. Not many people smoke those. <laughs> Thanks. So what is it you wanted to talk to me about? I know what you did for me, sending me to the open arms. And I think you want to help me again. There's not a lot that I can talk about. You know that. So that spell Crane was trying to break. It's not just while you're at work, huh? What I mean is, I don't want to waste your time but I don't want you wasting your own time either. Back in the dressing room, at the pudding and pie, I told you what I was looking for, and you found a way to tell me. You sent me to the open arms. Maybe that'll work again? You can try. I just... Go ahead. It... might work. Crane wasn't the murderer. The open arms was a setup. And you sent me there. Was there someone else you wanted me to find there? These lips are sealed. If I could answer you just like that, I wouldn't have had to make that appointment with you. No, I guess not. Sometimes, we have to find our way through life on our own, grasping and fumbling in the dark. I... I used to have friends to help me find my way, but now they're gone, and I don't know what to do. Are you trying to say something about Faith and Lily? What I'm saying is friends matter, and I... I don't have any left. So I hope you're looking after yours. Are you? Look around you. Who are you talking about? Are my friends in danger? <sighs> I'm sorry. I thought I could do this. I need you to know I want to help, but... But... It's okay. Take your time. I'm sorry if I'm wasting your time. I thought I knew how to say it. Ribbons. Faith wore one too, huh? Do you like it? Hmm? Do you? How can I? 
It's a tool to keep you stuck in that life. Subservient. That's why you can't tell me anything. It's the ribbon, isn't it? hat sie mich das gefragt. Faith. Can't we just take the ribbon off? No! These lips are sealed. What? You can't. Just stay back. You can't do that. Slow down. It's all right. I'm not gonna do anything. Please, don't. <sighs> okay, I get it. So the ribbons, if you take them off... Irgendwas passiert dann. If anyone finds out I came here. That's probably snow. Listen, Sheriff. Can you keep this conversation between us? I could be in a lot of trouble. I shouldn't be talking to you. I won't tell anyone, don't worry. Thank you. Oh, ich hätte es nur erzählt. Sorry, I just need to talk to the sheriff for a moment. Please excuse us. One minute. I might have a new lead for you, but I don't know how solid it is. Beauty and Beast called the office just now. They said they wanted to talk to you about something. I wonder if they've heard about Crane. Thank you for listening, Sheriff. You should go on to your next business. I don't think you'll be wasting your time. Then wait, you don't have to go. That was abrupt. It's one way to send a message. What did she tell you? I didn't mean to rush her out. Did you get anything from her? She told me enough. I think she told both of us with the way she just left. Okay then. Good work. So about Beauty and Beast, do you think there's something to it? Is this the right place ich to look? Ja. What could they know about the crooked man? Or do you think they just heard about last night? And they're scared about what's been going on? Well, whatever it is, I'm sure they called for a reason. Suppose I better go check it out. Hmm. You know, Beauty came to me a while back. She was looking for financial assistance. I told her there was nothing I could do and and she said that meant she'd have to go somewhere else. Bigby, you don't think she meant that she was going to go to the Crooked Man, do you? That would explain why they called. We need to solve this before something else happens. Who knows what? I have other matters to attend to. I want to know Jack with Jack. Die hat auch noch was hinter meinen Rücken. Deswegen, jetzt, jetzt habe ich was hinter ihren Rücken. So, Snow, jetzt gehen wir aber auf die Bar Barrikaden. Ich habe genug Hündchen für dich gespielt. Oh Gott. Cool, erstmal ein Schöpfchen getrunken. Und wann wirst du mir sagen, oder wirst du nur das Geheimnis behalten?